This is section 9.2, Direction Fields, and our first and only content objective is to work with slope fields, which are also known as direction fields. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain what you do differently when you're matching a differential equation to a slope field, as opposed to matching a differential equation solution to its slope field. Before we can do this objective, we need to be very clear on what a slope field actually is. And a slope field or a direction field for a first order differential equation of the form dy dx equals f of xy is simply a plot of short line segments that have slopes equal to f of xy for a lattice of points in the plane. So the first type of problem that I'm going to expect you to be able to do with slope fields is to sketch the slope field for a given differential equation. If we look here at example 1, we can see that the slope at any time is equal to the x-coordinate of the point plus 2. So the easiest slopes to draw are the slopes that are horizontal. So we ask ourselves what values of x or y or both will create zeros for the slope. And we can see here that if the x coordinate is a negative 2, then the slope will be 0. So we can come to the x coordinates of negative 2 and draw little tiny segments that have slopes of 0. If I now move away from here, say to the right, all of the x coordinates are negative 1. And if I add a negative 1 to a 2, I end up with a slope of a positive 1. So I can draw a slope of positive 1. Similarly, if I move to the left, then I would have x coordinates of negative 3, and negative 3 plus 2 will give me a slope of negative 1. So I can now draw segments that have slopes of negative 1. Now notice as x becomes larger and larger, the slopes will become steeper and steeper. We'll have slopes of 2, followed by slopes of 3, followed by slopes of 4, etc., etc. Finish filling it in and we see that the graph will look like this. If we continue now and try the same process with example 2, we see that it's a little bit more challenging because in this case the slope, rather than depending solely on the x-coordinate of the point, it now depends on both coordinates of the point. So if I choose values of x that will make the slope be 0, we can see that if x is 0, the slope will be 0 because 0 times anything over 2 is going to give me 0. That means graphically I'll have 0 slopes whenever x is 0. By the same token, if I let y equal 0, then I can see that the slope here will also be 0. So that means along the x-axis I'm going to get little tiny segments that have slopes of 0. Now as soon as I move off the axes, let's say I want to move to the point 1, 1, then if I plug that in, I will get a slope of negative 1 half. So that means I would have a slope that goes down 1 over 2. So I need to kind of angle toward that point. If I go to the point 1, negative 1, then I'm going to get a slope of negative 1 times negative 1 gives me positive 1 half. So that will take me up 1 over 2 and I'll angle toward this point. I can do that same argument over here and over here. And then I can move away from the 1, 1. Let's say I move to 2, 1. Well, if I plug in 2, comma 1, I will end up with a slope of negative 1. So that one's going to be a little bit steeper. And I can make the same argument here. And I can continue the process until I end up filling up my plane with something that looks like this. So your job now is to be able to draw slope fields for any given first order differential equation. Notice that as the x and y coordinates get larger on the right side, the slopes become steeper in the negative direction and steeper in the positive direction in quadrant 4, whereas in quadrant 2 we get steeper in the positive direction as we move further and further away from the origin, and likewise here, steeper in the negative direction. You can check whether you've done your slope field correctly by looking at the slope field on your TI-89 calculator. 
So in order to get these slope fields on your TI-89, you need to change the mode to differential equations. Then you need to enter the differential equation appropriately. So let's pull this up and let's try our second differential equation that we already graphed. First I'll turn on my calculator. I'll clear out what's in there. And then I will go to my mode and I will change this graph feature from function to differential equation. Hit enter again to save it. Now if I go into my Y editor, I'm going to clear out what's in there, and we see that we have this Y1 prime. So this Y1 prime is the same thing as saying the derivative of Y1 with respect to T. Now just like the function editor has um, a requirement that you always use the variable X, this differential equation editor requires that you always use Y's and so what we're going to do here is we're going to enter that second differential equation that we had in example 2, which was dy dx equals negative xy over 2, and we want to get that put in here properly. So how it works is this y1 prime is the same thing as the dy dx, and now we're going to have it equal to that negative xy over 2, except we'll replace the x with a t, and we'll replace y with a y1. So we would have a negative t times a y1. Then on the bottom, we will put the 2. Now the next thing is we want to set our x and y ranges in the window so that we can get the same picture that we had. Now the calculator is not going to give you the exact same thing because the resolution is always just a little different and I haven't been able to figure out how to get those marks, the little dots, to show up and match up exactly, but you can get the general shape. So if I go to my window and I'm trying to mimic what I see on the problem above, then I will need to have a window that's about negative 4 to 4 on the x ranges, or negative 3.5 to 3.5, and, and then the y ranges look like they are maybe negative 2.5 and 2.5. And now if you go all the way down here, notice we didn't change anything with the t's, and we're just going to leave that alone, and if we go all the way down this field resolution, that is a number that tells you how densely populated the screen will be with your hash marks. So if you have a low number, you will have few hash marks. If you have a high number, you'll have a lot. So let's try putting in a 15 and see what happens. If I graph now, we can see that we have pretty dense markings way more than we actually drew on our slope field. So if we wanted to change it and make it more sparsely populated, we can come down here and maybe put in a 7. If we now graph, see that we have fewer of those marks and it looks more like what we just drew. So this is a nice double checking feature to get the general behavior of the slope field. But on the AP, if you draw slope fields, it will always be by hand. The second type of problem that I'll expect you to be able to do with direction fields or slope fields is to match a slope field to the differential equation that created it. So that means with type 1, you're generating the slope field on your own. With type 2, you're given the slope fields and a selection of differential equations, and your job is to match them. So I have several tips here for you. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for coordinates of x or y that can create zeros. Sometimes this is easy, and sometimes this is a little more challenging. For example, if we look here, we can see that if I plug in a negative 1 for y, I'm going to get a zero slope for dy dx. What that means now is that I can go look at the location when y is negative 1, and I can determine whether I've got horizontal slopes. And look here, I do. So it appears that this one is going to match with this one. If we look at number 2, tip 2, we want to look for coordinates of x and or y that create undefined slopes. So those would be values of x or y that would cause me to divide by 0. Since I have no division of variables, this tip is not appropriate for these three problems, but it will show up on, say, your web exams or on the AP exam or on a test. The next thing we can look for 3 and 4 have to do with strips of parallel dashes. So we can see here that along this line, y equals negative 1, all of these dashes were parallel. 
Same thing here. All these dashes are parallel. All these dashes are parallel. No matter what y value I choose as I travel across the slope field or across the plane, all of the consecutive little hash marks have the same slope. So when that happens, when I have horizontal strips where the slope is the same the entire time, then I'm going to have a dy dx that is in terms of y only. So we already from tip 1 found that this particular differential equation matched because of the 0. We also can narrow it down because this differential equation is in terms of y only. So here we've got those horizontal strips where every dash is parallel. So again, if I wanted to flip it and say vertical strips, then I'm looking for choosing an x value and having the slopes be the same no matter where I travel in the plane. So in this particular case, you can see that as the y coordinate changes, the slope does not. That means the slope depends only on x. So based on that, this picture could go with the differential equation that is in terms of x only. The last thing that we can do, and this often shows up on the AP, is you will need to analyze the slope's sign in each quadrant. Or you can select specific points to test in both the slope field and the differential equation. So for example, on this one it looks a little weird because we have both x's and y's, so we know we won't get vertical strips that have parallel dashes, nor will we get horizontal strips that have parallel dashes. And finding the zeros of this, that's going to happen when x minus y is negative 1, or when x plus 1 equals y. So that means along the line y equals x plus 1, we're going to get horizontal hash marks. And so we have that here. We can see that this one matches here, this one matches here, and this one goes here. The next type of problem that you will encounter Type 3 is rather than matching a slope field to the differential equation that created it, you're going to match the slope field to the solution of the differential equation. So with these types of problems, you are going to look for an equation that will swim through the current. If we think about the graph of cosine of x, we know that it will look something like this, which is a periodic trig function. If we look at this one, we can see that it's going to be a line. So based on that, we can see that a line will swim through this current, a cosine will swim through this current, and the solution here, we can see it's going to be a rational function that has an asymptote at 0. So we can see that we've got that kind of behavior. We're scooting down towards 0 on both sides. So if we look at these actual functions graphed on top of the slope fields, we will get a picture that looks like this. Let's say that we want to check this on our calculator. If we look at this first example where y equals cosine of x, if I take the derivative, I will have dy dx equals negative sine of x. So if I wanted to graph the slope field that matches this particular differential equation, I could go into my calculator and type in my y1 editor that I want instead of this, I want to put in negative sine of t. And I'm going to change that resolution. We'll make it like 10 maybe. And we will graph. We can see it looks a little bit like this. I could probably change my window, but we're close enough. Now if I want to draw the solution, which we know is cosine on top of this, then while I'm on this graphing screen, I can select F6 and then draw function, which is the option 2. This kicks me out to the home screen. And remember that I'm now in function mode. And function requires that they be given to me in terms of x. So my solution is cosine of x. So if I draw the function cosine of x and then hit enter, it will take me back to the screen. And I can see how that solution is swimming through the current.
The last and final type of problem I'll expect you to be able to do with slope fields is to sketch a solution curve through a given point. If we look at example 1, we have dy dx equals 2x, and we want the solution that passes through the point 0, negative 2. So what that requires us to do is to plot the given point 0, negative 2, and then we need to swim through the current. So we know that the slope is 0 when we're at 0, but as soon as we get away from 0, that x-coordinate is going to be doubled. So the slope is going to be positive to the right of the y-axis, and it's going to become increasingly steeper as we move through the field. So we'll end up getting something that looks like this. On the other side, we again can swim through the current and we get progressively steeper, and we end up getting that parabolic shape, which we would anticipate, because what did we take the derivative of with respect to x that gave us 2x? Well, it was a parabola, x squared, plus some random constant, and the constant turned out to be negative 2 when x was 0. If we look at example 2, which is a little more challenging because we don't know how to solve this, we can still plot the given point 0, 1, and then we can move through the slope field by swimming with the current. We can see at this point that we're getting shoved down, and then we're going to hit this flattening out region, and then we'll get sucked into this current that is heading along this line. And what you're going to find on the AP is that they will often give you slope fields already drawn, and they will select a point that is away from one of these big attractors, and then they'll want to see that you can get toward that attractor, or if you start in that attractor, that you stay in it and don't ever get out of that current. Let's say now that you want to double check these graphs on your calculator. Well, we can do that by setting our calculator up appropriately. So with your calculator in the differential equations mode, we're going to access the y equals menu, and then we're going to select tools. And from that tools, we're going to choose 9, option 9, which is to format. And we're going to double check that our solution method is RK. If it's not, then we're going to select it. So let's do that first. Here we are. We turn it on. We go to our Y editor, we go to this F1 tools, and then we're going to choose option 9. With option 9, we can see that the field solution method is RK, which is what we want. If it's not, we'll arrow down to it and we'll select RK and then hit enter twice. Now that we have the calculator set up, we're going to enter Y1 as we did in type 1. So let's enter this particular problem. Remember that x's get entered as t's, and that y's get entered as whatever the number is that we are in the differential equation for. So since we're in y1 prime, we're going to enter y1. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we go through our given point. And here is where we ignored the t's before, now we're going to use them. So the point on this particular problem is 0, 1. So we're going to go up to t initial, that's our initial x coordinate, that's 0. And then this yi1 stands for our initial y1 value, which will be the y coordinate, which was 1. And on our window, we're going to make sure that the x's and y's match up with the x, x range and the y range on the actual window that we're looking at. And this time, we're going to adjust the t's. Notice that this t initial should match with your x value. t max is about how much time you think it's going to take for that solution to be drawn through the slope field. So I always start with 10. That seems to be enough for most problems, and if it's not, you can always go back and adjust it. So now that we have the t's in here, we're just going to go to the final piece of it, which is the t-step. Now the t-step is how far we go before we compute another slope. So if we do this too large, then our solution is going to look really choppy, and it probably won't be smooth, and it won't connect in a way that actually looks like the true solution. But if we make it too small, then that's going to make this graph super, super slowly. So probably point 0.1, that tends to work pretty well. It get, it's got enough accuracy that you can see the picture, but it's not so accurate that you slow everything down.
So now that we have our t's in there, we're ready to graph. And we can see that we're getting the slope field that looks similar to this one. And we start at the point 0, 1, and we're moving toward that attractor. And then it does the left side for us. And we can see that we did indeed graph it the way we were supposed to.